those days called the electronic organizer. Uh, many of you might remember, I remember one of my first was the, the Casio Boss, uh, quickly followed up by the Sharp Wizard. Um, and again, I've owned all of these devices. Uh, one of my favorite you know, PDAs was the Scion uh, series of devices. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Scion. It's a British company. And actually, the Scion operating system to this day is one of the best mobile operating systems ever. And actually, it became what is known today as Symbian. So the Symbian operating system that Nokia is behind now is actually an evolution of what was originally the Scion uh, operating system. And this was an awesome device back in 1991-ish. Um, then, of course, excuse me, Apple, who today is a major player in the mobile marketplace, tried once before, um, not very successfully, with the Newton, uh, which was their you know, first handheld device uh, quite some time ago. And then the one that really sort of took off and really changed everything and led to, in my estimation, the smartphones we have today was the Palm Pilot. How many people in the room had a Palm Pilot? Yeah. So the Palm Pilot really changed everything, and not just because it was a portable device, but because it was the first portable device to very easily and effectively synchronize your data with your desktop. So you could synchronize your calendar, you could synchronize your contacts, and all the things we take for granted in the smartphones and mobile devices of today really sort of started uh, with the Palm Pilot. Then came the pager. Now, this is actually what the BlackBerry first looked like. Uh, today, you're familiar with the BlackBerry in its phone form, but this was the first BlackBerry, the first BlackBerry, which I also had, uh, was actually a pager. So it was a two-way pager, but it also had a very small, thumb-ready, QWERTY keyboard. And that was the first PDA to really become wireless. So now, not only could you synchronize your data, but you could actually send and receive messages wirely, and it wasn't just the messages that a pager typically was, was uh, available. You had calendar events, you had rudimentary, rudimentary email. And then that wireless really changed everything dramatically, leading to the smartphone of today. From that little pager form factor, BlackBerry sort of grew up a little bit um, and changed their form factor into something that was much closer to what you look at a BlackBerry today and saw a film. This was, this was functionally still a pager. It's not a phone, but it looked very close to what the Blackberries look like today. Uh, back in those days, I carried my cell phone, I carried my Palm, Pot, my Palm Pilot, I carried my Blackberry pager. I pretty much walked around looking like I was wearing Batman's utility belt. Um, and so the advent of the smartphone allows us to reduce the number of devices that we carry with us. The first wireless Palm Pilot was a device called the Palm 7. Uh, and the Palm 7 had this little flip-up antenna. And this was released in about uh, 2000, I think. Palm 7 came out around 2000. Uh, and this was a wireless Palm Pilot. So basically it had all the functionality of a Palm Pilot. But it also had this little antenna you could flip up and you can get wireless applica applications. The first you know, app store for wireless devices was really for the Palm 7. They called them PQA, which standard, stood for Palm Query Applications. They were applications that allowed this little device to query wirelessly through this little antenna. So that was really the first <coughs> smart, almost smartphone, but smart device. And then, of course, the PDA was, the wireless PDA, or the PDA phone, was born, which was, of course, a smart idea. So Qualcomm came out with this device shortly thereafter, which is essentially literally just a Palm Pilot shoved inside a phone. You know, and it literally was, you know, it looked, the screen was no different than a Palm Pilot screen. And when you flipped up this little keyboard, you saw you had a little phone, phone pad and you could make phone calls. And, and Qualcomm, Qualcomm rolled out with that device probably around 2001. Again, I told you, this is not chronologically accurate. I didn't do my homework. You may not want to report on this. <laughs> so then uh, Handspring, which was a company that was started by two of the founders of Palm, uh, Donna Davinsky and uh, Jeff, whose name escapes me at the moment, sorry. What? Hawkins, Jeff Hawkins, thank you very much. And Donna Davinsky started a company called Handspring. And Handspring first came out with a device called the Visor, which was a Palm Pod you could stick cartridges into, including a wireless cartridge that made it a wireless device. And then they came out with the first Trio. So this was the first Trio. The first Trio had a flip-up uh, <coughs> cover and the QWERTY keyboard, and then this was the, uh, you know, the, sort of the first phone 
Now, I personally have gone through pretty much every Palm OS Trio device that you see here at one point or another, up until the Trio 755P. That was my last Trio. Um, and then I kind of skipped over the rest of the BlackBerry line, but as you can see from the devices I showed you earlier, BlackBerry evolved into the devices you're familiar with today, including the, the, you know, the full uh, touchscreen Blackberries and all the other uh, permutations of the BlackBerry device. Um, personally, I skipped over the iPhone because I prefer a tactile keyboard, so when I couldn't uh, keep using my Trio 755 because I felt that the Palm OS was not keeping up with the times, it didn't have Wi-Fi, it didn't have a lot of the features that the newer smartphones had, I skipped the iPhone and I went to an HTC Touch Pro, which is a really nice device from a hardware standpoint, a very large full QWERTY keyboard slide out, a lot of touch screen functionality, but underneath all that was still Windows Mobile, which you know, HTC does a good job of putting their wrapper around it, but it was still a Windows mobile device. And I was still looking for something that was, you know, palmed or handheld from the ground up. And so, um, well, actually, in the midst of all this, I do keep a Nokia N95. So I have that, and I use that as a media device. I don't use it as a phone, but I use it to stream video and send pictures to the Internet um, because the camera on there is spectacular and as a media device using things like Quick and 12 seconds and other services that allow you to stream live video. Uh, it's a great device. So I, I, instead of carrying a camera around, I carry another phone around as a media device. But of course, my, my device of choice today is the Palm Pre, which I like very much. And, and I'm happy to go back into the, the Palm Circle after having uh, utilized all those previous Palm devices. So all of this leads us to our discussion tonight, the battle of the smartphones. And of course, without the smartphones, you would, without the OS's, you wouldn't have a battle of the smartphone because we have about six major OS's that are really competing for mind share. I talked about Symbian already, which is the evolution of the original Scion operating system. And if you have a Nokia phone or an S60 phone, you're familiar with the Symbian OS. Uh, of course, Windows Mobile, which last week they just announced they're changing the name to Windows Phone, which is interesting. Uh, of course, the BlackBerry is yet another OS. The iPhone OS is yet another. Android, of course, Google's made a big play in the mobile marketplace, and there's been a lot of commotion right now with Google and iPhone and their competition just today. Uh, Eric Schmidt stepped down from the Apple board because as Google moves more into uh, activities that overlap with what Apple's doing, there are conflicts of interest there. And then the latest, uh, the new kid on the block is the Palm Web OS. So I think the, the battle of the smartphones is really driven by the battle of all these operating systems to become the de facto standard or the default mobile operating system for smartphones. And with that, I will turn the floor over to Bridget Carey from the Miami Herald, who is going to be our moderator this evening. And we've got a panel of, of great programmers and technologists who work in many of these operating systems to talk to you more about the battle of the smartphones.